uh, Kassen, and you knew it wouldn't be a top lane Kassen because that didn't fit Pokemon. So that's why Zatai coming in made a lot of sense. He could play those carry champions, but now Kid, he plays a carry role. He needs to start carrying. I team. mean, yeah, definitely more of a support, I have to agree. But we are into champs like now. Worldly versus IG, our opening game of the LPL Summer. Couldn't have it any other way. The bands, we're pretty far through now. Gragas and Azir both banned by World Elite. As a Victus game, we go ahead and select, of course, it's a Lucas Sion. Lucas Sion banned away. Sad for the fans and, of course, us as well to see that train driver at the top. Nidalee is the big question mark. In that IET final, it was played on 5.7, I believe. Nidalee was still being banned out. Still gets those little incidental nerfs that makes the jungle that much more punishing for her. But Spirit, this is a champion he could carry on. We will not forget. It's etched in my memory when he play, finally picked that Nidalee against EDG and just smashed Clear Love and Foes with a massive carry performance. You have to respect the Nidalee, and you feel like even as the meta starts to favor those Cinder Hulk champions, there's always the potential of the Spirit Nidalee. Yeah, as I said, they can both just whip it out at a moment's notice and go off on Nidalee. So we'll see what happens. Ergo banned away there from IG is going to be a targeted ban at Mystic. Callista actually going to get a ban there for Waddle. It's sort of a curious pick up there. And IG, they've only got one ban left. Let's see what they want to take away. I mean, there's a lot of strong champions available. Still some Cinder Hulk favorites like Danunu and Sejuani. Sejuani may be finally starting to move away from a first pick, first ban status. But that doesn't mean, I mean, in a meta like China, where we've seen so much wonderful Sejuani play, so much excellent laying of CC, if you want to opt into team fights, what better way than to have that ranged ultimate to start off a fight? Yeah, and it's actually the Cassiopeia banner away there, so respecting the mid laner just a little bit more. I do like leaving junglers open. Both Spirit and Kakao are so strong that they can play almost anything, but Aluka gonna change it up. So uh, Hecarim, sorry, is his first pick, not the Scion. Yeah, snaps off the Hecarim. Still a very strong carry top laner. Probably gonna be Teleport Smite, though. We'll have to wait and see. There are good answers available in the draft to deal with this Hecarim, whether it's the likes of a Maokai who kind of has to give away free farm but has so much mid-game impact that you can look to take, say, they've already moused over the Rek'Sai here. Rek'Sai Maokai will be so much mid-game power to answer the late-game power of Hecarim or potentially just opt into the Gnar, which is a very strong laning matchup. Zatai's played a lot of Gnar. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gnar to be the answer to the Hecarim. Yeah, they're going to hide it for a little while now. Aluka does currently have Teleport Smite, so we'll keep track of that. But Rek'Sai, one of the best junglers still, the great champion for Kakao. But Alistar is starting to see a lot more play. And I was sort of thinking it's when we actually saw EDG at MSI. Alistar, you'd look at a tank meta like this, and what better way to beat your opponent's tank v tank just to have another tank from support. And I feel like Alistar's the last kind of beats down the last remnants of the mid lane assassin meta. People have still been playing that LeBlanc rocking. It's been banned and picked at first ban, first pick status. You pick Alistair, suddenly there's someone you cannot burst down as LeBlanc or as the castle that's being moused over here. Alistair pops that unbreakable wall, is never going to be a target for burst CC. And of course, provides so much CC on his own. Yeah, fine team fighter as well as World Elite. Going to go back to some old tricks in Noon. Uh yeah, Nunu is picked up here by Spirit. That's going to be his jungler. But Cassidy has to be a mid laner there, you think, there with the Hecarim already picked up. So a curious pick up there for Shie. But don't forget, we haven't seen him in quite a while. But I'm going to give, I'm going to give Rookie some time because he plays quite a number of champions. But I like to see the victor at least hover it over for a second. I'm surprised to see the early cast and priority. I guess that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. China was the first scene, Godby in particular from LGD, to pick up the newly reworked and there's a lot of options available. He's been mousing over the hard counter matchups, likes the like of Talon, but opts into more of a skill matchup with the Orianna. Still naturally going to beat Kassin in lane with that auto attack harass. Still a very strong matchup against Kassin, but it's not a super punishing matchup like Rookie was mousing over. Yeah, good against Assassins for sure. Orianna's always been solid, but there's an Evelyn in this draft here that kids just selected, and they already have a Rex Ian and Alistar. You're the color commentator, Papa Smithy. Good <sighs> luck. <laughs> <laughs> Why do these things happen to me? Look, it's the first game back in China. I don't think there should be any other way. I mean, Rek'Sai top would be yeah. very powerful here. Teleport Smite's already been moused over. I mean, Rek'Sai does so much early damage in the jungle. She could definitely power through the jungle with Smite. It'd be a bit go-going style, and a going didn't get that much success on the champion for OMG. But I don't think it's going to be Teleport Smite Evelyn, but that's a possibility. Well, we'll have to find out here as well. Lee. They've finished their draft. Cogmore actually is the pickup there for Mystic in a pairing with Conan's Morgana. Curious to see with Jinx open and Nunu already picked that they wanted to take Cogmore, but Mystic, we've seen it before, is going to go back on a hyper carry. I mean, World Elite, this draft, I don't like it very much because how many losing lanes can you pick in one game? Hacker, I'm always going to be out pressured by most top laners. I guess at this point, it's nebulous to see who's actually going to be in the top lane. Kassin's not going to have much lane control in the mid lane. Mor Morgana and Cogmore from level 6 will start to get good in trades, but definitely will struggle at the start of the game. 
So this pick and benefit is just crazy across the board. We're going to probably see Ezreal yep. for a bit of self-peel. Makes sense given there's so many people trying to get on top of him. Going for that self-peel tries. Kid was always confident picking Ezreal into tough matchups like the Corky. And sticks with it here. Yeah, it's a classic Kid champion. So he's been playing it for quite literally years in the bottom lane. So that'll be the lane there with the Alistar. Fairly defensive, like you mentioned, but very reliable and should be just fine there against the Kog'Maw Morgana especially. To answer your question, it seems like it's Rek'Sai top lane with the Teleport Spite. So go going the Prophet all the way late in last season. We might have called him crazy, but... Here we are, game one of the summer split in the LPL, and look what happened. I mean, the jungle follow is going to be insane. Rek'Sai so fast at farming the jungle. Happy to leave lane. Picks up an item. Probably going to be the Hydra first if they're going to see the go-going score thought, or maybe just the Cinder Hulk, of course, maybe is the more likely choice. They have a lot of options when it comes to the, the uh, a very flexible champion. Has that double global between the summoner teleport and, of course, the Void Rush. And what a crazy top lane matchup. It's... Aluka on the Hecarim against the tie on of all champions Rex. Yeah, what you can't see there is the smites that they both have as well. His two more smites, by the way, is Nunu versus Evelyn's going to be our matchup. We saw this again from Clearlove. Likes the Evelyn into Nunu matchup specifically. And the, you can cleanse the slow with your W. So, of course, get Snowboard and able to get out as Evelyn. And, of course, you've got a very high-pressure jungler in Nunu who wants to invade, but you never really have eyes on... Eve, unless you have excellent ward coverage down in the mid lane. Rookie should be able to pressure that cast and confidence. Yeah, probably both happy with the farm fest, but we'll see how the pressure goes. Mystic back on the long range carry. It's not Jinx, though. It's Cogmore versus the Ezreal. And last but not least, Conan kind of rejoining the lineup as a new old player, I believe you called him. That's Morgana versus Kitty's Alistar this time around, too. We did not see much in the late end of last season. It's Alistar priority was the order of the day at MSI, and now moving into the LPL season. First round Alistar pick. It's copying what we saw from Bang and Wolf. Ezreal, Alistair, about as safe a 2v2 lane as you could pick after maybe a level 1 where they struggle a bit. Yeah, just lots of good CC, plenty of options, lots of maneuverability. I love the lane, to be honest. It's just, it's safe. It doesn't pressure very well. It's not the best in a 2v1, although it roams. Roaming Alistair is a very scary thought. And you can just plonk Ezreal in the lane. He can open so much distance with, of course, the E and then Flash. But he's going to be able to be very safe. It's a safe lane, but definitely not a high pressure. No, and I think with that jungle follow potentially coming through, early lane movement is going to be very crucial here as well. I mean, will they be looking into the 2v1? That's the question. Evelyn with a roaming Alistair potential. You're talking about crazy gains. Get that Alistair level 2. Show up with the Evelyn damage and the Alistair CC and you can wreck the day of a mid laner, a bottom laner, whatever you want to go for. Yeah, you can. I mean, fun stuff already. I'm glad it didn't take uh, more than a game to get Evelyn and Rek'Sai somehow in the same game on the same team, but LPL, we're glad to have you back. What can I say? Yeah, the Cinder Hulk meta. I don't know anything about that. It's going to be Warrior, <laughs> most likely from yeah. the Evelyn. Evelyn has been seeing a lot of play in the LCK. It's been seeing a lot of play over in Taiwan as well. It's just been a very popular pick. Clear Love breaks it out, and then everyone's like, wait, Evelyn's pretty good now. Yeah, I mean, still really strong. Just uh, lines up well. It's very tanky, does decent sustained damage. There's just a lot to love about the champion, especially in this matchup. But we're about to start our first game of the Summer Split. Let's get right into the LPL. And welcome onto the Rift here as we do start off our first match of the day. World Elite versus Invictus Gaming in a best of two. And as we said, Papa, there is no better way to start a fresh season of the LPL. Looks like standard lanes are going to break up. Cal picks up his blue, but actually not ex enough experience to pick up level two instantly. Obviously donated a bit of experience over to Kid and Kitties with those small goals. He can seize the tie there as well as taking away a camp himself. So you mentioned it already. Already a strong jungler on her own with the smite for the top side as well. Going to rip through camps if he wants to. And now teleport into lane with the Ruby Crystal. So it's going to be standard lanes breaking out. Definitely not standard picks, but the nope. standard lanes at least to start off the game. Yeah, and I like the Ruby Crystal there as well. I mean, we mentioned the Warrior and Chant. They'll likely pick up their Ficka Cow, but have to think Zatai is going to want that Cinder Hulk. I mean, Cinder Hulk's probably going to be the start when it comes to Zatai in particular. It just scales so well. Of course, you want to put that Challenging Smite onto Cogmore, reduce the damage, try and dive that Cogmore in the late game. You don't have Flash, so the Flash on Burrow is not going to be a potential uh, initiation of them. So perhaps early home guards and then some flank wards to try and get that CC onto the back. Yeah, it's just a very different style of top laner that we've seen. Of course, Aluka looking okay so far. Have to be careful with the early trades that uh, Rek'Sai does not mess around when it comes to early damage. Kakao already here, but a wonderful pink ward's going to spot him. But Aluka, that's the wrong side of the lane. There's a tie taking a little bit too much damage, but Aluka's going for a long ride. tie finds the first unbar. Kakao's going to come through. Aluka, no flash to speak of here with his smite on the top side. And he will go down 
down as Kakao gets first blood. It just felt too much strength having the pink ward down that unfortunately was so far overextended. No flash. Don't even know if he'd skilled Devastating Charge at level 3 just yet. And it, regardless, it wasn't enough. And that's first blood to IG. And this is the, the team we've seen play best against this top lane Hecarim that's been dominant for the last few weeks and honestly in recent tournaments as well. Gank that Hecarim before he hits level 6 because he is very vulnerable. It was the very smart jungle path in coming through from Bengi of SK Telecom shutting down Dyrus on Hecarim in a very similar matchup. If you just make that very smart jungle pathing straight to top, you're always going to be confident as Hecarim to be able to push. You can just spam out the Q and, and try and push the wave. You get punished for it, and that's already first blood over Taiji. And that's the hard thing about uh, Luka here is Spirit actually going to come through trying to get a bind down, but Conan does not hit it, and instead the very safe Alistar Ezreal walks straight out of that gank. Just worry here for Waterly. I mentioned it during the draft. You've got losing lane matchups in top and mid. Bot will start to arrest around level 6, but it still starts as a losing matchup to some degree. And then you've got a high-pressure jungle like Nunu. If Nunu goes on too many solo invade missions against an Eve that's hard to keep track of, and of course pushed in lane, so the more likely that IG will be the first to react. You could get punished in the jungle as well, and then everyone will be yeah, losing. Yeah, you can take a cow even with some extra pressure as well. And I agree with the bottom lane. I think it starts neutral and slowly ascends in the Cogmoth's sure. favor, but among anything else, it's slow. It is really slow to get going. That's, that's the worry you take. Of course, you know, if you spawn into this game 30 minutes, you're going to be happy to be worldly if you're going to have a 2-3 item cast and if you're going to have Aluka, Trinity Force, Cinderhulk. But at this present point, nothing like that to yeah, show for not it. Not right now is Mystic getting some good pressure down. Actually, 10 CS ahead of kids so far. So looking good in the lane. Spirit, bit of counter junglings, taking away the Scuttle Crab on the Dragon side as well as Mystic and Conan going to start pushing down and do some damage to this turret here. This is something that Ezreal Alistar really doesn't fancy. Absolutely. They don't have a lot of wave clear coming through between the two. And of course, the Targon's procs coming through from Kid. He's on the Relic Shield. And Kid, that's the one downside of Ezreal. You don't have AoE wave clear until level 6 till you have that true shot barrage. You can prune the wave with your Mystic shot, but you're kind of at the mercy of both Mystic and Conan, specifically Conan, the only person in the lane with really that AoE pushing ability. Yeah, a bit of a long-range auto attack as well. Just to add to that turret pushing, as you can see, Conan doing some nice zoning. Kakao putting down a ward. Might look to the Dragon, actually, level 4 right now on the Evelyn with this Skirmisher Saber already finished, but doesn't want to quite go for it yet. I mean, Eve is no Nunu when it comes to soloing down Dragon. She's very brittle in the jungle. They added on that extra 10 flat damage onto the Q, the hate spikes, so you can actually clear the jungle fairly fast. Of course, stay higher HP just because you're killing the jungle faster. Kitties initiates, but probably just looking for a bit of trade damage. Yeah, good combo there, but Mystic will pop the bio cam barrage and just pop a couple of shots back in there as well. As we can see, evened up the lane now has Kid and Kitty, so that aggression buys them a bit of space as both top laners hit level 6 and Aluka had a rough start to the game. It's not silent that he's playing, not the same safe champion that he's used to, but he has managed to navigate with a nice bit of CS straight to level 6 now, nice and safely. To some degree, the, the pressure's on IG when it comes to actually using this early game comp advantage they have because in the late game Nunu Cog okay it was originally an AD carry support duo but it's always been very very strong throw on that blood boil get massive damage coming out of the Cogmore giving it just another steroid just increase the efficiency of those item pickups suddenly your first item timing is enhanced from that extra attack speed and movement speed coming through from the blood boil you're going to have Nunu zoning with the ultimate two backline massive threats between Kassan and Hecarim late game team fighting is crazy strong from world elite so it's on IG to do what you mentioned should pick up those dragons, pick up those turrets, because if it just goes neutral, the gold lead stays within 1 to 2,000 come 20 minutes. Waddley's going to be very happy. Yeah, I mean, you already said it. You know, effectively two, arguably three at least slow, if not losing lanes. Yeah, that's a farm game here for Waddley. So we'll see what they get done. Spirit has reasonably contained Kakao in the early levels. But again, both these junglers who once upon a time and even recently in the LPL were known for aggression, they have slowed things down considerably in the first 10 minutes. And again, it suits Waddley, like we mentioned. Kakao has to get things done. Soon going to have the ultimate available, the Agony's Embrace, maybe be able to get some things started, but otherwise very equal CS values. Even Kassan in a difficult matchup, only 10 CS down or less at this present point. And Cogmore's winning in CS, so that seemed to be the prophecy. This lane will just get better for Cogmore. It started pretty good, so worrying times for Kid and Kids. Yeah, Rookie, though, does have his blue buff, clears out a pink ward, so nice movement there. Aluka still on the top side trying to fight the tie, but does not come recommended again. Even just with the Barmy Cinders, the tie's now picked that up as well. The damage on that Fury Bars field is just ridiculous. Just so much AoE damage from the Q, and then, of course, the Cinderhulk burning on the lane minions. 
The cow just retreats, gonna pick up his red buff. Things are relatively quiet, although Mystic takes a nice little burst. Yeah, good pressure there, actually set up nicely by Kitties. His kid gets the full damage of the ultimate down, but Mystic just gonna keep farming away. Conan chugs a potion, and it has been a while since they've gone back, but Kogmo, he's gonna have a nice first shot to do. When Kogmo does back, in general, this lane has been relatively pushed up for Worldly. That's been the one lane where they managed to have wave control. Just because of item timings, Jia has been able to push up in the mid lane. Top's been a pretty equal. If IG can start to get some wave control in the bottom lane, mid will be easy because, of course, so much more ranged wave care coming through from Rookie. That's the real, real go time for this first dragon. It's already nine minutes in, which by at least spring season standards is going to be a late first dragon. But they need to start getting on the board. Because if World Elite pick up the first dragon, they'll have had everything going for them in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's exactly the pace they want in this game. As we can see, some early items have been completed. There's actually three jungle items now completely done and enchanted here. We've got a Cinderhawk, uh, Stalker's Blade, sorry, they're coming through for Spirit with the Chilling Smite. And Double Skirmish to Saber, a Warrior though for Evelyn as her in chat, and of course the Cinder Hulk for the Tizer X side. So even though the jungle pool, the true jungle pool, is starting to favor Warrior junglers to some degree once again, you are fitting in. Man, that's it feels so, that, so low in mid. That flash was really clutch there by Shia. Keeps himself safe, but Rookie with a cleanse nonetheless and a bit of pressure from Kakao, forces Spirit to come cover his lane as he recalls home. And look at this lane of matchup starting to get difficult. Only has the Catalyst, still of course looking to power up. The power trough is real for Cassian at this present point. The question for Kid is, we've actually seen him on this Ezreal just go straight Trinity Force, not pick up the tier. Not backing in the first 10 minutes suggests to me probably going to be no Mana Moon if you want to have a bit more presence in bottom. Yeah, Kid does favor the Trinity Forces. Kid, he dies right in. Punts Conan back there as he's forced to flash away. Mystic going to go in for Kakao, ready to go as the teleports are coming for both. They're going to turn it around. Kid, he's though, pops his ulti. Conan getting over. Aluka, he's found his way in first. Pops his ulti, gets onto the tie there and smites away onto the Alistar as well. Mystic's forced to kite away. Spirit channels his ulti, takes out Alistar. Mystic's kited into tie away. Kid's going to go down as Nunu gets a double and Zatai just going to dodge that binding but Shia is coming as well. Spirit is going to dive in there but it's a little too far but World Elite win the first skirmish 3-1. Excellent target selection coming through from World Elite focusing first onto Kakao. Lots of consistent damage but super brittle with just a warrior enchant. Took down that Evil and then just changed targets as possible. The jungler being dead means it's a very safe first dragon. And this is the prophecy I had. World League going to be super happy if they can take down the first dragon. And they're going to take it uncontested. Yeah, you can see Spirit there with the Snowball Max, but does have a smite and got... Didn't even need his consume actually just to take away the dragon, but plenty of neutral control there. And all of a sudden, those first three crucial kills and the dragon evens that gold right back up. In fact, World Elite a slight lead, but again, with this team comp, that's exactly where they want to be 11 minutes exactly. in. Exactly. A scaling team comp with the neutral advantage. No turrets to speak of, no disadvantage whatsoever. Things looking excellent for World Elite. Yeah, Shia returns to his lane. Rookie still bullying, actually, 63 to 100. This is one of Rookie's trademarks, so he loves to bully laners constantly. His wave control in the mid lane in particular is just wonderful to behold. It's just a very punishing matchup. You might think that LeBlanc versus Kassin will be super punishing for Kassin, but of course you can make those trades, just put extra points into your Null Sphere, and that magic damage shield helps you out so much. You, that doesn't help you against the auto attacks from Orianna, and then the harass is so much less predictable that you just end up getting chipped down extensively. And then the late game, there's always situations where Orianna might actually be more powerful than, Ken, than Kassin in some burst scenarios. Yeah, I mean, you can see the other problem there as well. Kassin can't really aggressively trade with his Q when he's getting significantly outranged by the ball. Yeah, exactly. There's just not many good items here for Gia, many good options here for Jir, and it's just falling further and further behind. He's starting to farm up, but falling quite far behind his Kakao. He's found his way in the top lane here, actually, looking at Genka Luka, but ultimate not actually quite available. The Tiger to dive in, Kakao will move in as well, but devastating charges popped in Hecarim, just runs straight away. It's a very optimistic attempt to pick up a kill. Maybe they want to pick up the second the blue buff. Is that the third blue buff will be spawning very, very soon. Creating pressure up the top lane, but kill pressure onto a Hecarim, even if the ult wasn't up. Between those two champions, not so high. You can see some engages in the bottom as well as the wave gets pushed back into World Elite Star. But Mystic, he's got a Sheen, he's got his Phage. He can start to maybe win some trades here if he wants as well, but Kid has equalized that power spike with the exact same items as we are going to see a first item Trinity Force for both AD carries. And it's very smart to just understand the situation. If he opts into a tier, be just 
too little power, too much scaling required. Look at this trade from Mystic. Yeah, the Black Shield Mystic is just going in there. Kitty's almost eats another Living Artillery as well. And all of a sudden, Cogmore rests control right back of the lane. And if I was to describe Cogmore as a champion to lane against, I'd say for the first five levels, it's actually okay. You know, he can trade. He has that no mana biochem barrage. It's kind of annoying to trade with. But from level six onwards, those trades get really nasty. Yeah, especially with the Sheen and the Fade, which is done. So a big spike there is a Luka fighting back to tie here in the top side. They've both got their skirmishes, sabers, and their Cinder Hulk's now completed, but the first next mage to buy might be the big one as the tie. Got himself a Ruby Crystal already, but Aluka's going home to shop. He's got his flask, he's got his saber. Where is he going next? That's the big question, of course. We don't know the gold values at present, but it's all about the Cinder Hulk start into the further items. In terms of actual gold, very, very equal between the two top lanes. The tie has a bit more flexibility, hasn't finished his boots too, so could look towards the Giant Spell to get that percentage scaling going with the Cinder Hulk enchant. But in general, we're seeing very formative builds. We know where the AD carries are going. We know where the Cinder Hulk champions are going, but we're waiting to see some, any of the sort of differences when it comes to just valuing damage. And speaking of damage, it's a Black Cleaver meta, and there's a Phage on Unrexar. Yeah, we have to remember that 5.8, we can now start to think, look at that Phage and think, all right, is it going to be a Trinity Force or is it going to be a Black Cleaver and everything for Rek'Sai it might just be Black Cleaver. I'm going to think Black Cleaver. It builds really well. That's kind of the thing that people haven't talked about by the Black Cleaver is that if you're a top laner with Cinderhulk, you buy two Ruby Crystals, suddenly you're getting percentage bonus health coming through. Luke is taking a bit of burst damage, but no real kill pressure there. So you get those double Ruby Crystals into an eventual Phage and Kindle Gem for a bit more tankiness. You have the Phage for excellent trading, then Black Cleaver with that 20% CDR. With between Summoner tel Teleport and what, 30, 40% CDR eventually going to be onto Zatai. We're talking about instant global presence every, what, 40 seconds? Yeah, I mean, it's, we did start to see a bit of this, but we didn't quite have Black Cleaver in. All the pieces went there for CDR going. is pretty sweet. Yeah, not a bad stat there at all. So we'll see how Zatai ramps up here as he is looking good there in the lane, actually. It's pretty even in the top, like you mentioned. Mid is actually a horrible position, unfortunately, as now she might even get Doe pick a cow moving in, but he'll just give up the turret. And this is what I wanted to see earlier in the game from Vitus Gaming. Take down those neutrals because there's not much wave clear coming through from World Elite. That's the only hole in their comp. Mystic can do a bit of it between spamming out that ultimate and the E, the Voidus. Aluka, melee range wave clear, and same story with Kassin. So pick up those early turrets. That's the minimum standard for IG in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, dragging up in a minute 25 as well. So we'll see if World Elite can get, go for their second or if IG will pick up their first. And as we'll live in the lane, does open up a bit more space for Mystic, who has a decent lead. But I talked about the mid lane gold difference. It's already a thousand up for Rookie. I want to see Kakao in particular. Start rotating to the top lane, not for the gank pressure, but again for taking down these turrets, chipping them down as much as possible. Not ideal with two melee top laners, but so much wave clear coming through from Zatai. Kakao can help with turret damage. Just use the E ability to pick up extra attack speed and then just smash away on the turret. They need to get those three outer turrets down. Get those aggressive wards in, because if they can't at least have flank advantage with uh, aggressive wards, just from the fact that they have so much wave pushing, they're not going to have a lot of strategic options to answer what is soon going to be two, three item Cassidy and Echo. Yeah, you know, it should be a relatively simple task there. A spirit going to come into the mid lane, but Rookie just shields himself up and runs away under the dissonance. There's no side stone yet for Nunu. In fact, neither jungler has a side stone yet. And if flank wards are what it's all about, IG going to find themselves an easy time as Mystic does take a combo, but takes a big chunk of damage as a result. That trade not winning at all. Kitty's with the ulti on goes down. Mystic gets another kill, but they can't get the turret. And Conan just living in that exchange. Kitties was really late with the Unbreakable Will. I think he wanted to save the mana and just use that for different abilities. Didn't pop it, dies in the trade. Turret doesn't go down, but it's literally one hit away from dying. And this lane just gets better and better for World of Yep, they broke up the Trinity Forces, but I don't think they're created equal in this lane, especially with Cogmore now being level 10. Tower will go down as Mystic stays around to pick up a bit of extra gold for himself and clear out the next Minding Wave. And Kid, no other major purchases, actually waiting for the wave to come back so we can get a bit of extra gold. But Mystic, the big carry for World Lit, starting to get stronger and stronger. And I feel like Ezreal versus Cogmore is a different lane and identity. For example, the Ezreal versus Corky matchup that Kid loved to opt in with Ezreal. At least when you pick up Trinity Force on Ezreal, okay, you don't have the same standing damage as a Corky, but you can poke from 1100 range with the Mystic shot and get good trades in. You're not going to outrange Mystic with trades. You're going to take just the same Trinity Force procs and then more and more harass with the Biocane Barrage. It doesn't feel like this lane ever tips towards Ezreal, despite the fact that, I mean, 
Cogmore's gonna push in. Cogmore's got arguably the better late game. Not the safer, but certainly more damage in the late game. Yeah, Luca here trading up with Zatai as well, keeping that CS relatively close. And that Kindle Gem in Zatai's inventory means that Papa Smithy, you may just be right here. I think we're gonna be seeing our first Black Cleaver of the day. And I'm gonna guess not our last. I'm surprised it wasn't a Black Cleaver. Nah, that's probably the strongest of the Black Cleaver champions, but Nocturne, Rek'Sai, both excellent with that item. Usually you won't see it on a Rek'Sai just because you don't have quite that income in the jungle. But if you're coming out of the top lane with the extra income, Black Cleaver's great. Go uh, going apparently was right here, the Time Lord predicting correctly as a couple wards get cleared away. That Dragon back up now as Rookie gets his blue buff. Both teams looking to contest most of... Uh, most of the champions have been back to shop. They've got their extra gold. So who is going to get control around the Dragon Pit as well? It'll clear out a while, but IG already have the speed train. I'm going to pull you back. Are we really comparing Go Going to no. good old Genja? We are not. But impressively, impressive to see that the Rek'Sai was not just something that he wanted to do for fun. Clearly had something going on there. I mean, obviously has that potential for global presence with the teleport and eventually towards the late game going to have that neural network with the tunnels up. There was always some validity to the pick, but such a strong jungler that you're giving away huge jungle pressure usually, but with Evelyn back in the champion pool, plenty of pressure around the map. Yeah, I think kind of threw Water Leap for a loop in the draft as well, especially with that Nunu. Cause threw every, come on. Yeah. No one <laughs> yeah. was seeing this. No. But I mean, Spirit picking up that Nunu Kakao gets his counter pick effectively there as well. So working out in a lot of good ways for IG and Zatai. He's got a tunnel relatively close to mid lane. He's got his Black Cleaver up now as well, even as his teleport back in. I think we're going to see a team fight here and IG this time. They are prepared to fight. It is worth noting that surprisingly, Zatai has more split pushing stats than Hecarim does. Usually it's the Trinity Force that comes in, but not really yeah. a team fight build. Kid is going in though, takes out Conan already as Kid's gonna get credit for that kill. And Alistar tanking up so much damage, gonna soak Cogmore's W completely sheer, trying to find a way in, but Zatai is actually the one with the smite. Now Spirit forced to flush away there, Mystic cutting as best he can, but IG maybe can't find this here. Luca might look for a flank, he's right up towards the top side. We're gonna go back in, he charges in, finds Rookie, gets exhausted though, knocked up there by Zatai as well, gets taken out as the Shockwave peels him back in. Zatai gets another kill, Mystic now caught out of position, gonna be the Next target's forced to flash out from under that. Shie goes in aggressive. Mystic actually gets a kill, but a dragon and two kills. IG will take it. Yeah, it was a really strange engage from Luca. A literal 1v5. Didn't even have the ball riding on him for the guaranteed five-man shockwave. That's the absolute minimum is one exit kill, but it's definitely advantage IG with that trade. Yeah, and finally pulling it back a little more. Gold now nice and even objectives evening up as well. And we talked about Waterloo's late game coming through. IG mid game's not bad at all as Kakao takes away a blue buff. And they might have picked the last possible minute to start getting themselves into this game before Waterloo can take it over, but they're picking the right fight so far. And the big factor with that team fight was the fact that Zatai was the first one there. Black Cleaver's excellent split push. He was completely smash a Luka in trades, but he definitely didn't have the same team fight statistics like the almost completed Frozen Heart. It's not often that Hecarim is more built for early team fights than an opposing top laner. Usually he's the one trying to build a quick Trinity Force from the top lane. But in this situation, Aluka had the better stats. Theoretically, would have been better in a true 5v5. It's just with such a quick teleport from Zatai, true 5v5 never happened. And I think for me, really also showcasing the power of Alstar. Mystic used everything he could in an altered up Alstar and Kitties. Not only got the initial engage to kill Kona, him, but soaked all of the Cogmore's DPS as well. That's why I say that Alistair's perhaps the ending of the tank matters. We're going to get a replay coming in. So waiting for the... This is Aluka going in 1v5 at the end. Probably not the smartest move. You can see what he was thinking. He's like, i got to buy enough time for the Shockwave. But it was too late in that situation. Four members fighting together, looking for another pick, but Zatai overextends just a little too far. The answering trade of one for one belies the fact that two kills to one and the Dragon went to Invictus game. And Rookie now got his Luden's Echo completed on the Ariana as well. So they line up that nice Shockwave. Actually clipped, I think, Shie, but didn't kill him and managed to get the second kill for themselves onto Aluka. They'll be just fine there if they keep going through and again. You know, it's, it's maybe not the late game strength, but plenty of mid game strength. And this has been the weird controlled IG that we've seen a lot of recently. They just get to a point in the game where they decide, okay, we're going to start taking over the game. And I think they have to at this point. We already mentioned the fact that Waterloo in the late game going to have those champions like Kassan and Hecarim that can do so much work in team fights. Luton's Echo just means that when we're talking about the. Uh, Wave clear advantage between the two teams. It's landslide in the advantage of Rookie in particular with the Luden's Echo and just Oriana naturally having massive. It's going to be instant wave clear on the back line now with the Luden's Echo prop. And that's why you see Worldly, they have to be the ones to group. 
but you're not going to get much work done against this IG team. See Rookie gets a couple of Luton's Echo procs on the wave and just cleans it out with a bit of help from Kitties as well. So no push forthcoming. That kid in the bottom side of the map, going to see what he can get done as well. You can see quite a few towers still remaining here as well. It's two to one in the turret score so far. So IG have a slim lead on that front, but all they have to do, honestly, just keep fighting the way they've been fighting. If they have to wait for Dragon, so be it. I feel like IG should be rotating the tie into the bot lane. He's the one that has effectively two globes. They're trying to get the pick on Gia. Okay, Cal moving in. Shia, pretty hard champion to pin down normally. A lot of roof works gets him to the safety of his outer tower, but Kakao, he made a good run of that kill on Cassidy. A lot of optimism with the use of the Agony's Embrace. We're just trying to pressure, but I mean, just move the Rek'Sai. Has good wave clear. They want to take this last outer turret, and they have so many global resources that you might as well throw Rek'Sai in the bottom lane. She's already got multiple tunnels near her top lane turret. Get that last third outer turret and then push up that vision to ensure that the blue and red buffs of World Elite are being contested. Then Cassidy without a blue is going to have little to no way clear whatsoever. Speaking of rotations, Mystic actually doing a nice job. They gets good damage onto the turret. Spirit and Koning will join in as well, but it might not be enough. The minion's going to die. Mystic will take a couple of shots up there with the black shield, but a little bit afraid of the shockwave from Rookie, I think. A smart rotation. Both Ezra and Alistair were back in base, so they were able to get huge chip damage, despite the fact that the minions died instantly to the wave fear coming through from Orianna. Gia's already started this split push wave, and we were wondering, given Gia's champion pool, loving champions like the Diana and the Assassins, would he be able to recreate that in a meta that really favors more of these wave tier champions? He's trying to do the split pushing on Cassidy, and if he gets away with it, it'll buy World Elite more time to get items onto both he and the uh, Hecarim in the top. I mean, we talked about his famed Vladimir play already. I think undefeated in three games on the champion. So not a massive statistic, but starting to get develop a, a quite a taste or quite a record for the champion here. Has demonstrated that he can play more of that sustained damage big team fighter. I think for me, Cassidy might be the best hybrid of both sustained damage and the assassin that he loves. And there's a good there's a good cast and comp that could come out here. A Sivir, for example, is your AD carry. With the instant wave there would have been a much more reliable choice from the AD carry to at least have some semblance of instant ranged wave clear. They've just gone so greedy with all this scaling that it should be punished by IG. At 24 minutes though, the punishment window is starting to close and IG they're what, 1,700 golden heads? Not a lot. Yeah, no, under 2,000 here, as you can see. Equal on Dragons, up slightly in turrets. Dragon is back in 35 seconds, and items keep coming through for ID. But Mystic, he's got his pickaxe and his first two items with the Trinity Force and the Blade of the Ruin King already completed. Kid's quite far behind as far as overall gold goes. And this next fight might not be one IG can freely take. Teleports are available for both top lands. It's the second dragon, which of course, not that big in terms of stats, but definitely big on the road towards five, and specifically the third for movement speed, which might be so critical with one team trying to rotate, other team trying to siege. We're waiting to see where this second dragon will be decided. Big item pickups coming through from Aluka, had that frozen heart he was close to, getting super, super tanky, but no true burst coming through. No sign of the Trinity Force just yet. You can see Waterloo trying to take out the last few hits on that turret, but Rookie, so much wave clear on the R. Ariana is she still on the bottom side level 13 actually with a good amount of gold I love this rotation from Waterlead. it's so smart to put your cast in this lane especially if the only person to answer that split push at the moment is Ezreal who doesn't really have much wave control has no kill pressure and of course not many champions have kill pressure on a late on a mid to late game cast but just really can't do anything but eat these minions and effectively freeze the wave because Ezreal can't choose to push doesn't nope. have the option Mystic to. with the black sh shield there as well gonna take it out Rookie actually gonna take quite a bit of damage Great Great flash by Mystic out of that shockwave, but that was an optimistic attempt at a kill. Ariana not going to be able to get to Dragons. If World Elite can rush it down, they have a lot of Dragon damage between the Kog'Maw and Nunu, so they should be able to take this down. And again, the snowball continues for World Elite. Yep, Zatai taking away the blue buff, but that's not quite the trade that Invictus Gaming would have fancied. Zatai will keep jungling away, but World Elite will shred down the Dragon and take their second. If you don't get those flank wards in, because they haven't taken this bottom turret, that's why they're getting punished here, Pastry Time, is that we mentioned before, no flash on this Rek'Sai, so can't flash on Burrow into the back line. You need flank wards to get the teleport, and potentially a teleport home guard gank, of course, who doesn't even have boots too towards the home guard. But if you want to be able to impact a team fight, a dragon, you need those wards, you need the third out of turret to make it easier to get those flank wards, and they just haven't done that, IG. Yeah, and that was the difference in that last dragon fight. It was the tie teleporting there early, couldn't get it done in the last fight, 
Ended up being almost basically a pick on Rookie anyway to win it for them. And IG almost smelling a bit of desperation here. Is there up around the Baron area trying to at least uh, make sure they get exclusive vision? I guess it's just a surprise to me because it feels like the win conditions are pretty clear for IG. Get ahead early. It's so arrogant to pick Cassidy and Hecarim, just to begin with, let alone a Cogmore as well, who doesn't have much wave control either. Say what you will about the individual lane matchups, none of these champions have pushing options, so theoretically, the enemy team should have wave control, should be able to push in and then go for aggressive wards or team fight accordingly. The World League have basically gotten away with, with uh, you know, going for something so arrogant in the first 28 minutes and not been punished. No, looking good so far, staying strong as Mystic continues to power up. Zonia's must be done now for Shea as well, just has to go back and buy it, given the amount of gold he's already got. That Athene's even on the way with a Fiendish Codex there as well. Building towards that build, we see God be popularized at the end of last split with your Zonias, your Athenes, and your Rod of Ages, Cassidy. I mean, once you get those three items on level 16, you've got a one second riff walk coming through, just doing so much consistent damage. It's just hard to kill. As the Assassins have gone out the meta, there's no burst damage on the IG side that's going to be able to take down this Cassidy when you hit that three item timing, and you're what, half an item away from finishing that? Scary times for IG. One thing you can say is that if they ever manage to win a team fight, again, I don't know what that looks like in terms of how the mechanics, some sick outplay comes through from Rookie. They can push in very fast, and if there's a couple of members from World League, they have little to no wave clear, so they can get a lot of advantages once those death timers get high enough. But it's looking very, very scary. Yeah, just looking down as well, I do do have a small advantage from the jungle, actually. That locket is really nice for Kakao, and there's no locket at all currently for World Elite. Nor in Mikhail's, actually, but that Kogma, who they're probably going to want to protect as well. So World Elite do need a bit more farm and a few more items, but the Zonias is done now for Shie. Just going to work in on the Athenes now as well. Last Swift Storm must be close to done for Mystic there as well. And actually, Spirit makes me a lie. He's actually just finished his locket as well. It's unbelievable to me that 29 minutes in, they still don't have this outer bot lane turret down. Ezreal and Alistair, okay, not much wave clear, but you've got the, Re the Rek'Sai with two globals. Rotate her fast to be able to pick up that turret. It should have been a freebie 15 minutes ago, but 30 minutes in, it's now a huge hole in the game plan of IG. And I think the biggest issue has got to be all the free time she has actually gotten moving into these side lanes with Zatai hasn't been to pressure. Even Aluka steals away the Gromp and gets level 16. Sure, he's going to get challenged here by Zatai as the Black Cleaver stacks are doing nicely, but he was devastating charge away actually might not be enough as the tie thinks about chasing further but just gives it up but the damage trades are going to be landslide in the advantage with the 30 percent shred coming out from the black cleaver nothing that the hecarim can do it has no damage of his own just yet as a kindle gem but it's probably going to be the spirit visage of course and maybe only now going to be into damage but that cloth armor signifies maybe just full tank from aluka yeah, we'll have to see what aluka wants to do he does like his tanky champions got oh, his spirit visage already and that cloth armor i think is right mystic gets caught by a shockwave and rookie takes him out and ig you ask me what a winning fight looks like a winning pick looks like that. And we always mention that aggression is needed from the likes of Rookie because that's not what Kid's about. Flash Shockwave coming through to pick up the kill. Knew that they timed the flash from Mystic. Had didn't have it for another minute or so and pick up the kill and look towards Baron. Yeah, IG are moving aggressively onto the Baron. It's at 40% health now. It's here trying to come through. Aluka going to teleport down and see what he can do, but the Baron is dead there. Kakao takes it out. Spirit flashing to the back line and channels his ulti, but Kid throws out an ulti that tags Shea and that's two kills plus the Baron for Victus Gaming. IG need to get out and get as many objectives as possible. The bottom turret, that's just a given, but try and get an inner turret as well. No wave clear available on World Elite, barring perhaps one Force Pulse coming through from Gia. So take turrets while you can. You've got Ezreal, Baron, and Orexai that still has a teleport ready. This should be quite a few structures going down. There's the first one as IG going to take out the tier two in mid lane, but with Rek'Sai on the top side, they're going to rotate to bottom, pick up their next, as you said, effectively free turret here, but even Kid is going back with that empowered rig or since the IG prefer to set up for Dragon. It's very interesting build coming through from Kid. Shades of what season two Wei Zhao builds. It always went Trinity Force into Last Whistle for the maximum poke damage. But after that pick, wasn't really a relevant statistic in a 5v4 situation. They pick up the Baron, then use what is a very strong objective taking comp to power down that outer mid tank. And Zatai did actually use his ultimate, saves his teleport, but gets pressure down onto this outer turret here as well. So going to open up space though. around the Dragon. Yeah, that's have to be careful with this turret. It's dead. Big damage coming through with the Black Cleaver pickup. The Baron up minions are going to do the work you'd have to think. Yep, though, do do enough work. That cannon creep coming up nicely. Mystic even 
Kind of getting assaulted by it, has to back away into tie. 4,000 plus health already with the Randy and Zoman plus the Cinder Hulk time. Even a Kindle Gem plus that Spectre's Calfire. I believe you mentioned that Spirit Visage. The tie does a lot of damage with his Black Cleaver and he's real tanky as well. That's the thing, Rexide has so much damage just with a bit of AD in this situation. Can use the Q on the minions to pick up the attacks and then power down a turret. That was the split push we were looking for earlier and look at the burst of damage already from one rotation by Rookie. Yeah, Rookie Rabbitin's Death Cap actually his next item as well. And GA does not have that Athens done yet, nor is he level 16, sitting at 15 currently. So World Elite, everything was going so well for them, and all of a sudden IG find themselves 6,500 gold ahead. Still with a Baron Buff, looking to pick up that next Dragon as the tie. He's not stopping the push, and neither are IG here. Mid-tower inhibitor is actually going to fall down now as well. Massively out-rotated World Elite. You know they want to look for a fight, just, but they've lost the turret for free. Yeah, it's dead. Kid's actually on the right side, just taking it out. Hikikau going to guard him, but... Well, he'd have to be careful not diving too far in. Shea going to get some poke down. Kitty's just going to head but Aluka away. The teleport's going to come through. Aluka trying to go in onto Kid. It seems like they want Mystic chucking out damage. Spirit uses his ulti, but Rookie just cleans somebody out as Conan goes down. Mystic going to get assaulted there by Kakao into Titan. That's a double kill coming through for Evelyn Shea. He lives. We didn't do anything else in that fight. The inhibitor falls and three kills as well. IG are not stopping. This should be the end of the game. Shea's caught up. That is so much damage as well. Still CC'd through all that burst. Does just get out. No, can't do it as Kitties comes back in again and gets the fourth kill as well. Does kill the R-Star as the tie. He's gone off on some sort of journey to a tunnel. But the Nexus will fall and then Victus Gaming will take the first game. Victus Gaming finally played towards their win conditions. Got that huge pick on Cold War. Was very savvy to know that the... Flash was still a minute off cooldown. Got the pick, took the Baron, ended the game almost instantly pastry time. The lack of Waper and greedy comp the world leader assembled was so close to getting into full gear, but they were forced into engage after getting out-rotated, losing their mid lane inhibitor turret. And they have a comp that works very well around Cogmore, but with everyone distracted and diving around, Cogmore died for free, and so did World Elite's hope. Yeah, that front line not bad as far as dive goes with the Rex like Evelyn, but Rookie, that Flash Shockwave is phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It won them the game just from one singular outplay. We're always looking to either Kakao or Rookie to make those plays, and this game, it was all about Rookie. It wasn't. That greedy drafts again. I wonder what adjustments we'll have to see, because World Elite... That, I like what was going on, but they just, as you said, couldn't stitch it together towards the later stages of the game. I mean, IG gave them the opportunity to grow to a point where it looked like they'd be able to overtake the game. And it almost felt like they were playing with their food to some degree because, the man, they really finished it emphatically at the end of the game there. I think you have to go for a more balanced draft because in this situation... Lots of unlikely things happened in the row to contrive World Elite to be in a position to potentially win with this hyper carry in three lanes comp, and they still lost. So go for a bit more of a balanced comp. Have one ticking time bomb, but three ticking time bombs sadly exploded on themselves. And I think the other question has to be, how much do you think they got thrown by the Rek'Sai there in that draft? Because that, that ended up working out very well. We all got thrown. Let's be real. I'm, I'm not even sure IG prepared that strat completely themselves. It was probably <laughs> just a mistake, Locken. No, I mean, it was very smart. It was savvy. When OMG did it, I wasn't convinced. But IG, they made me a believer. Yeah, looking good there with the Black Cleaver. Strong stuff there from IG to close out the first game. But a very competitive series. We'll see what happens as we move into game two as the LPL Summer continues.